yeah, my name's Daniel. Um, I'm the, the graphics lead at Calabra. So I've been working on uh, Wayland and Western uh, mainly for for AGL um, over the co past couple of years. But um, we have just started looking into the app framework in the IVI and, and UCB profiles. So I just wanted to to cover some of the things we're doing. Um, if we could go to the next slide, please. Thanks. So yeah, um, I am. I'm quickly going to run through what we have as the app framework today in in the IVO profile or UCB, um, as well as some of the the design principles and um, the underlying basis for our plans for the new app framework. Um, how we're going to go about developing it and some of the the challenges we're looking at. Um, yeah, if you just next one, please. Thank you. And <laughs> keep going. Thanks. Um, so yeah, I mean, conceptually, the app framework is about being able to, to manage, um, install, start and restart um, applications and services. So it's one of the more dynamic parts of, of the IVI system. Um, and it has to, to handle things like apps and services that might crash or fail in some way, um, and also be able to, to bridge the two together. So um, apps are able to, to speak to services and make requests to them, and they get activated when they need to. Um, and also that apps are able to be started on demand. Um, so what we have currently today in the next slide um, is, yeah, there's there's a couple of these which you can find in the app framework document um, that we have today uh, published on the AGL doc site. So this one, also the, the next slide goes into some more details about the, the security framework and how apps and services communicate through this um, this binder, which is the, the specific um, <clears throat> IPC mechanism that the apps and services use to communicate. Um, and then on the next slide, we've got a little bit more detail about um, the execution environment for the applications, you know, how they're, they're started and, who's responsible for managing the services and so on. Um, so the main takeaways um, from the next slide is that it's it's the most complete, um, you know, of any of the solutions in the AGL profiles. Um, it has the largest design, I suppose, um, you know, it handles packaging, installation, um, execution and life cycle for both apps and services. Um, it's got a built-in security framework for actually executing anything as well as the communication between them. Um, this communication happens through the binder, which kind of mediates every interaction between apps and services um, on the system. Um, so while it is complete, the downside to this is there's quite a large maintenance cost um, because it's it's a large code base um, and there's quite a large use cost as well. Um, anything you want to run on the IVI and, and UCB requires this specific and fairly complex integration, which is quite unique to to AGL. Um, so yeah, if we go down, um, we can start looking at the, the principles for the, the new application framework. Yep, um, that we've worked on. Um, so the three core principles we have are, are being closely aligned with upstream, um, being able to provide a foundation and a basis for the rest of AGL to provide their own app frameworks. Um, and specifically for, for the IVI and UCB profiles, making them 
accessible um, for for developers, um, for people who want to experiment and evaluate um, AGL. And yeah, so if we go to the next one, um, you know, AGL has this, this mission around open source, which is really close alignment so we can get the best of upstream into AGL. And also like happened with projects like Pipewire and Wayland that AGL can bring its expertise into, into upstream. So we deliberately chose to base this as much as possible on existing upstream projects. So we can really get that benefit, um, you know, rather than doing our own work off in our own sandbox, you know, something where we have a lower maintenance cost because we're reusing what's already there in upstream and we can contribute back as well um, when it's appropriate. Um, yeah, so for the next one. And so currently there's some more, some more detail and there was a lot more discussion in the, the June face-to-face -face for this one, but one of the goals as well is to provide a strong foundation for the other AGL profiles. So even if the production ready instrument cluster and container groups ultimately have their own application framework or something like it, um, they should be as closely aligned as possible. So um, we can we can reuse this work that we're doing and the work that comes from upstream. And also for, for developers, um, it's much easier for them to be able to port their applications between different uses of AGL um, rather than requiring very specific integration for, for each profile. Um, and one of the bigger parts of this is moving towards a, a layered concept where we start to look at the AGL base OS, um, a, an SDK um, for software developers that they can build on top of, um, and then the runtime environment, which can be composed of these multiple layers of the base OS, um, some services from the tier one and OEM, um, and then some, some value add extra software as well. Um, yeah, so realistically for IVI and the UCB, our main target is towards these development and evaluation use cases. We're not directly targeting production vehicles here. Um, so one of the, the goals of our development was to make it easy to, to deploy um, your software into something that isn't a real isn't in a real car but is as close to it as we can get um so we want to to make it easier for for people to understand agl and to be able to evaluate agl and and try their own developments on top of of agl um so in this sense it's kind of an entry point whether you're your target profile is production ready or instrument cluster or some other um, profile or derivative of AGL, the IVI and UCB should be a good bridge to, to help you get there. Yes. Um, so yeah, to, to those points, um, we decided to use systemd as the basis for service management. So if you install a Bluetooth service, a CAN service, um, anything like that, then we'll be reusing systemd here, um, just as the any kind of regular system. So it can it can monitor the service, it can activate it on demand, it can restart if it crashes. Um, we have a logging solution through the systemd journal as well. Um, and this is already done to an extent with um, 
with the existing app framework, but we're taking this a bit further and making it more explicit. The biggest change though is for applications where instead of building every target application from the Yocto base directly, um, we're looking to reuse a lot of work from the Flatpak project. Um, and Flatpak has this concept of, of SDKs and, and runtimes. So what we're looking at prototyping to begin with is um, having the AGL Yocto build generate a Flatpak SDK um, that applications can build against and a Flatpak runtime um, to give apps that execution environment. So, so apps would run in this um, kind of sandboxed container um, and doing that gives us a pretty powerful um, security primitive because it's much easier to, to demonstrate that we can lock down and control execution with things like SE Linux or SecComp or any of that. Um, and for the, the IPC and RPC, um, we're planning to um, just reuse existing uh, services which are there, like gRPC is very popular or dbus is used for many services like Bluetooth um, and leave the, the access control to be something external. Yep. So yeah, just a, a short diagram explaining how we, we generate the, the Flatpak SDK um, and sort of combine the base system um, plus what we have from from these additional layers into into the overall runtime environment, um, which makes it easier to to have a common base but customize it and and add to it rather than having to have bespoke image builds for for every single user. Yep. So yeah, for for our development plans, there's just a a short calendar. Um, there's a more detailed version that I've presented previously, but um, we're quite happy with the the designs we've shared. Um, so we're we're looking at within the next couple of weeks moving into our first development cycle where we get this integration between Yocto and Flatpak, so we can generate the SDK um, and pick our initial target services and and apps to convert to sort of show how you would actually use this and how it would be integrated into the full system. Um, and as part of that, document the integration and document the, the best practices. Um, so this is something we expect to continue through the rest of the year. Um, and we're targeting sort of Marlin plus one um, as our switch over integration point. Yep. Um, yeah, I just said all that. <laughs> um, so yeah, the most of the challenges we have are, are on this integration side. Um, so things like how, how AGL should um, host and mediate some of those builds as we do with Yocto today. Um, how we make it easy for people to um, to share and discover and enumerate all of their own builds, um, how we deal with different variants, like um, some options that the Yocto base has been built with, um, providing as well examples on how to extend both the SDK and the runtime. Um, and making sure that this is well integrated with the, the overlay system um, and also working with, uh, working with WAM to ensure that both the native and web-based application works. Yep. Um, yeah, I am almost exactly out of time. So there's been a lot more discussion um, over the past few months in detail. Um, and there's the links there to the virtual face-to-faces we had in 
in March, which was more of a discussion of the problems we have with the current app framework, um, as well as a kind of getting some guidelines and some common ground for um, what we should be doing with the app framework and how it should be maintained. Um, and then in June, there was a, a more detailed version of this presentation, which sort of went uh, quite into the weeds of how we would actually approach this technically and, and what we're planning. Um, so yeah, as, as we go along with the development, um, will be obviously within the app framework expert group and providing updates. And um, yeah, if you're interested, be good to see you there. Thank you.